What's up everyone? My name is Marie and welcome to my channel and welcome to another speed build. So for today's video, I am doing something a little bit different because today I am building with custom content, which I'm very excited about. I haven't done that in a very long time. I don't normally use custom content at all. It isn't something that I do a lot. Actually, I barely ever do this. I only do this for very special occasions or if there is some specific custom content that I really want to try out in my game and build something fun with. Um, basically just really focusing on that CC for the sake of that CC because I want to use it. Um, but for this one, that wasn't necessarily the case, but I uh, actually built my boyfriend's dream home for this one. I did this over on stream and I asked him to write me a little something about his dream home. Just write me a little paragraph of what your dream home would be, what kind of style, what kind, like what size, what, what do you want inside, like what types of roof, like, what do you need? What do you want in your house? Just just describe to me your dream home. That's basically what I asked him. And then I will try to build it. So he did that and um, he definitely delivered. He wrote me a paragraph. It wasn't little. It was pretty long. And I actually have it here on the side so I can read it to you so that you know exactly what kind of description I was working with here. Um, so I hope you have a minute while we watch the exterior of this home come together. I will read you what he wrote me. He wrote this situated in a beautiful area on the outskirts of the city, allowing easy access to both the city center and nature walks on foot. So that's why I landed on the world of San Sequoia, by the way, that's where we're building. That is the world that came with uh, growing together. And I thought that this would be perfect because this lot specifically, it's a 40 by 30, so it's pretty spacious. And it's situated in like a little neighborhood, as you can see, there is like a little street with homes uh, behind this lot. But on the other side, across the street, there's this beautiful lake and a park where, you, where your Sims can just like go for walks and stuff. And it's so dreamy. And I thought that that would be perfect. Like I thought that that would fit the description. So that's where we're building. Um, in this location stands my dream home, a relatively small house surrounded by a spacious garden. It, ten it ended up being pretty big because of size proportions in The Sims, but he said small, but then also he wanted a lot of things. So I needed it to be kind of spacious. Um, so the house must be large enough to meet all our needs. It doesn't resemble every other house you see on the street. It has a unique shape and original decor. The use of calming colors and vibrant accents gives it a 70s look and feel. Beautiful, large and small plants are scattered throughout the house. So he wanted lots of plants and he wanted retro. Now I knew this already because I mean, I kind of know his style and I know what he likes. Also, our tastes are very similar. And what's nice is that this home is actually essentially also my house because I am part of the dream home living situation, thankfully. So I get to move into this house as well. And of course our cat. So essentially it's a house for the three of us. Um, that's what I was decorating it for. So 70s look and feel, I really try to um, show that on the exterior as well. He said he wanted like a cool, funky shape to the house. So that's what I went with. I worked off of a retro dollhouse that I found on Pinterest. And I thought that that was so cool. So I initially used that to get started on the shape of the house. I did end up like changing it and rotating it, uh, stuff like that. But it did really get me started on the roof lines and just the overall shape and look and feel of the exterior. So yeah, it's definitely retro inspired, both on the outside as well as on the inside. Um, and then I also used like orangey red wood tones and stuff for the exterior, which I feel like is very retro, but I also try to make it like more modern in the sense that it's retro inspired but make it 2024, you know, like that's kind of what I was going for for this one. Okay, and then for the rest of the description, it says it features a cozy hallway with plenty of storage space to, to keep clutter at bay. So that's what I did. The living room is inviting with a large sofa and plenty of spots for Floop to lounge. Floop is our cat. Um, I envision large windows to flood the space with natural light. Additionally, I want a staircase leading upstairs with a view from the upper landing overlooking the living room 
and kitchen, reminiscent of a loft. So he wanted a loft. I kind of figured that because I just kind of felt I knew he I know he likes that. So I kind of figured that he would want that in this house. It definitely gave me issues with a floor plan, um, but I managed to figure it out. And I actually think it ended up looking really, really cozy. Um, so basically, it I made it happen. We'll see that in a little bit. Um, this, the kitchen seamlessly connects to the living room so I can see what's happening while cooking and chat with Marie and Floop. It boasts a stylish kitchen island and a view of the garden, plus a cozy coffee corner adds charm. So my boyfriend is actually the one that cooks between the two of us. Uh, he, he likes to cook. Uh, he enjoys that a lot. So his dream kitchen would be very spacious and um, he wants an open floor plan. So that's the important thing to keep in mind there. And a coffee corner is very important. We always talk about how we want that. We live in a tiny apartment right now. We barely have space for a kitchen. So let alone a kitchen with a coffee corner, it's not a thing. Um, so we can dream. And I definitely did make this happen in his dream house. I say his dream house, but really it's also mine because our tastes are very similar. And um, yeah, I, I definitely turned this into my dream home kind of as well. Uh, okay, and then for the rest, we have a hobby room where we can indulge in activities like painting, crafting, or other creative pursuits. This kind of caught me by surprise. Um, he's very creative, he likes to draw, but I didn't know that he wanted to paint, but he said, yeah, if only I had the space for it, I'd love to do some painting. So um, it says, I want this space to have French doors opening out to the garden so we can integrate indoor and outdoor activities. So I turned that into a little sunroom. We have a sunroom in the back. Um, no French doors, I did sliding doors for the retro modern look and feel, so that's what I did. Um, but he was very happy with it, so that was good. And yeah, I just kind of turned that into a sunroom for painting and drawing and just kind of creative hobbies like that. So we have that as well. Uh, I envision a home office where Marie can stream with an amazing, unique backdrop. So I'm, I'm so happy I got to actually decorate my own little dream office. So I did that, it was really nice. Um, but I also want to be able to work in the same room so we can spend time together there. That's kind of the setup that we have now. We have a tiny office, which clearly is this one, um, with a pretty wide desk. And this is my little PC setup. And then my boyfriend's PC is like right next to me. So whenever I stream, he usually sits here and like games himself. Um, or when I'm working on videos, he can just kind of sit there. We can sit here together essentially and um, use our PCs. So that is something that we obviously would want to do in another house as well. Um, preferably in a bit of a larger space like that would be really nice we're literally in a closet right now so you know a little bit of extra space wouldn't hurt um the bathroom features a shower and a bathtub with a double sink so we never have to wait for each other so i made that happen um and the bedroom is tranquil with ample light and a view of the garden complete with a small balcony for enjoying morning views there is also a cozy spot for Floop um, when she doesn't want to sleep on the bed. Attached to the bedroom is a, a dressing room, so essentially a walk-in closet with her clothes neatly hung with her own closets on either side and a large ottoman or similar piece in the middle for leisurely dressing in the mornings. I thought that that was such a funny detail. Why would you want to leisurely, what is leisurely dressing? I still don't know. <laughs> I have no idea, but I've made it happen. Um, there's no, in the walk-in closet, there's no like um, storage on either side. It's basically just really one big closet, but I feel like that would be more than enough space. And he did say he wanted a small house, so I couldn't make everything huge, you know? Uh, I really tried my best to not make the house a literal mansion because that would not make sense for just two humans and a cat. That's a very tiny cat at that. So I feel like I was really trying to keep the size, you know, to have it make sense for just, just two people essentially. But also of course, size proportions in The Sims are a little bit off and things are just very bulky and cartoony and naturally you just need more space for the amount of stuff and rooms and things um, that you would want in The Sims, like versus a real home in real life, of course, you can't really compare the two. So the house turned out to be pretty spacious, but it doesn't actually feel huge. There's no like large, like very huge rooms with a lot of space left over or anything. Everything 
still feels very cozy and not cramped by any means, but it's also not like huge. So that's what I went with. Um, and yeah, that was the entire description of the dream home. And uh, yeah, that's kind of what I was doing. So we can see the exterior come together. I was working on some landscaping. I also know that um, ideally my boyfriend, he would like to do some gardening. We don't have a garden. We don't, we have a tiny balcony, but it's useless. And uh, we don't have a, a garden or yard or any outdoor space for that matter. So we can't do any gardening, but ideally he and I, me too, honestly, we would like a, a fun garden to, um, you know, harvest some like fun crops and, you know, just have a little bit of a yard, a little bit of a garden. That would be so lovely. So I made sure that we had the space for that in the back with a lot of planter boxes and stuff. I created a little driveway because we do have a little car. It doesn't look anything like this. This car is very fancy. Our car is not, but uh, I just kind of wanted something that resembled a driveway. So we have that. Um, we kind of have two. I'm not sure exactly what the other spot is over here by the window. I just knew that I wanted, I did not want to park a car there because that window looks right into the living room space. And I didn't really want to look out at a car just like parked there. I, I that kind of ruined it for me. So I parked the car on the other side. Here you can see we're moving on to the inside of the house. Um, I skipped over me doing the floor plan because it took me a very long time and the footage especially sped up, which is very chaotic and you couldn't really follow it at all. So I just decided to cut that out. But of course, at the end of the video, I will do a tour of the house and I will show you the whole thing so you can get a better sense of the floor plan. Um, but yeah, the little listing said that there needed to be a nice hallway, like an entry space with lots of storage. So um, I was also building on medium wall height because that just made more sense for the shape of the house and it looked a little bit more dramatic and the whole retro vibe. I don't know. I just, I liked that better. I don't normally enjoy building on medium wall height and I was definitely struggling with it for this one too, but thankfully I was using some CC with like storage cabinets and things that came in uh, medium wall height options as well. So that was really, really nice. Um, so I was able to use that. And then one retro aspect that I kind of repeated throughout the entire house are those beams that you can kind of see. I use them on the exterior as well. Those beams are not CC. They're from, they're from the Get Famous expansion pack, but we also got them in Eco Lifestyle. And then I think one other pack, was it maybe Get Together? I'm not exactly sure. But I did use those beams throughout this build a couple times on the inside as well as on the outside, because it's just such a cool like retro aspect and it um, really acted nicely as a room divider in the living room as well because we do have one big open floor plan but my boyfriend uh, he also told me that he wanted like he wanted an open floor plan but he also wanted everything to feel very cozy and in its own little spot its own little nook if you will so I thought that those beams would make a really cool like room divider to kind of achieve that effect if you will so that's what I kind of did and I think it turned out really really cozy um, but here you can see we have a hallway. I didn't really clutter up this build too much. I definitely cluttered it up and made it look lived in. Don't get me wrong, but I also know that in real life, in The Sims, I love clutter. I love making everything kind of messy and just realistic and cozy in that sense. In real life, I would like a minimal amount of clutter. I just want like some some things that I want to show off like on display, but I don't want any unnecessary clutter per se um, anywhere. So that's kind of what I try to do for this house as well, because I know that my boyfriend is the same in that regard. Um, so yeah, that's what I tried to do. But off of the hallway, you can see that um, there is essentially kind of like another little hallway, but it's open to the rest of the floor plan. There is a half bath off of that little area. And um, I just went a little bit out of my comfort zone with colors for this one. Because again, just to remind you, this is a retro house also on the inside. It's retro inspired. And I do know that my boyfriend, he really likes like these beautiful, he wants everything to be very calming and the colors to be calming, but he likes these like brighter pops of color um, to make the space more playful. So that's what I kept in mind and what I really tried to do. And thankfully I was using custom content with the most beautiful color options. Um, I did go CC shopping for this build specifically. So I only downloaded stuff that I thought would make sense for this home specifically that I thought would look good um, because otherwise I would get way too overwhelmed. And um, I just, I tend to get very overwhelmed with CC, which is why I don't use it all the time. But 
looking back at this and at these items that I used and just building with this stuff um, in the moment, it was just so fun. It was like looking at a brand new game. I had enough CC where I could just kind of filter out all the maxes, like in-game stuff, and only look at my CC. And it just really felt like I was playing a brand new game and it was so fun. Um, I definitely had a lot of retro inspired items in this CC or like with the stuff that I downloaded so I could use that everywhere like these little tables and this beautiful glass coffee table which we actually got this exact coffee table like two weeks ago we had it delivered um, so we have that in our apartment right now the beautiful glass see-through coffee table it's so pretty and I found it in the sims like in the in the CC I'm not exactly sure who this is by this is I think either Charlie Pancakes or my Shuno son but I could be wrong I'm not exactly sure who all these pieces are by, um, but I will read you. I I did make a list of all the creators that I used for this one. I didn't use all their stuff. Like I said, I only downloaded things. I kind of went through their pages and I downloaded things that I thought I could really use for this build specifically. So that's what I did. But I used items by Charlie Pancakes, Felix Andre, House of Harlicks, Little Dika, My Shuno Son, Piri Sim, Ravishine, and Sixem. And then I also downloaded some cat, like pet CC by Kate Emerald, I believe I did. Um, and, then, and then also some cat stuff from Ravishing, but uh, I listed them in the little CC list. I will put these uh, this little list in the description box of the video down below as well. I will not be listing the exact CC packs that I used because I couldn't tell you or maybe I can go back in my folders and kind of see what I what I downloaded. I'm not exactly sure, but I will for sure download all or list now all the creators that I used um, and link off to their either Patreon pages or Tumblrs so you can find them easily. Um, yeah, all these creators just had such I already knew these creators um, previous like I I have downloaded their stuff before I have used CC by these people before. So uh, I just kind of knew that all these things would go together well, they would kind of flow together seamlessly. It's very Max's match, which is very important to me when it comes to CC. Um, so I just kind of limited myself to downloading stuff by creators that I know and like downloading stuff that I know I will like because I've seen it or used it before. Um, so that's kind of what I stuck to so that I wouldn't get too overwhelmed and that it wouldn't become too much. Uh, and that really helped me, I feel. And uh, I just, I really want to do more CC builds. I know it's not everyone's favorite thing because it's, it's definitely more difficult to download. If you don't have the CC, then all this stuff will be missing. Um, but yeah, I just, sometimes it's fun to step out of your comfort zone and do something completely different. So that was this for me, definitely, because I, like I said, I, I never really use any custom content. So this was, um, this was very different and you can really tell the living room is coming together. It's, um, it's playful, but not too messy. And I guess that's exactly what I was going for. I love the color scheme in this house in general. I used a lot of muted blues. Um, and then the couch, of course, is orange. I feel like blue and orange is such a like a classic color combination that also just really gives a retro, in my opinion. And that was very important to me, of course, for this one. Um, and then we have some um, some like pops of blue and yellow and green as well. Um, and oh, I, I love these paintings that I place underneath the staircase. I thought those were so cute. And I really tried to do something a little bit different here with the couch as well. Of course, we have just the orange sectional couch, but then on the back of the couch, I added some extra seating, if you will, so that you could also sit on the other side because this space is very open and large and kind of long. Um, and a little awkward in that sense, but we do have all these like nice sliding doors. There is um, these bifold doors that open up into the hobby space, like the sunroom essentially. So there's a lot going on in this house and I really tried to make everything flow together seamlessly. And I just felt so inspired by all this beautiful CC. Like the colors were exactly what I was going for. You know how sometimes in The Sims you're trying to go for a specific vibe and the colors are almost it, but not exactly. That happens to me a lot when I like decorate in this game. But with CC, because obviously it's more like trendy, with CC it's easier to find stuff that is very trendy, like in real life right now. Whereas The Sims, like the in-game stuff obviously tries to 
kind of do that too, but then also in a more like timeless sense, if you will, um, because it would make more sense like over the years. But yeah, for CC, that isn't really a problem. So they give us all these beautiful colors and just things that are kind of trendy. Though I will say that I went, I tried to go for timeless colors in here as well, especially here in the kitchen. I really tried to make it retro, but modern at the same time. And I do feel like these wooden um, counters really help with that, like the overhead, um, the overhead cabinets as well, and just like the wood on the on the counters itself. And then that, what would you call that color of the countertop tiles? Is that like a a beigey muted olive green, I guess, is how I would describe it. And I thought that was so cool and retro, and I just really, really liked it for this one. Of course, I had to go for an island because that's what it said in the description. So I put a beautiful kitchen island um, in the kitchen, of course, and we have a little coffee nook. There is, um, the stove is on the island, so I thought that would be cool. So um, my boyfriend could be cooking there, like doing all the, all the cooking and things, and I could be sitting at the island counter with my laptop, getting some work done, like stuff like that. I really thought that that would be perfect for my boyfriend's and mine, <laughs> our dream house, essentially. It said so in the description that he wanted something like that. So I, of course, had to make sure that I did that. And then here you can see we have the little art corner. I was so, um, so happy because I found Sixum, um, Sixum CC. Sixum is a creator that I really, really enjoy. I um, download stuff by them all the time. Also just sometimes just like random little CC packs and I'll do like room builds dedicated to that CC specifically. Um, and Sixum has an art pack like an artist cc pack essentially so that's what i downloaded and i thought that that was so perfect for this artsy sunroom situation um like it said in the description there there needed to be a artist room if you will kind of so um so that's what i did here and also there is a cute little cat door in this in this house i never use the cat doors but in our dream home we would need to have a cat door because our cat needs that. Like our cat needs to go, needs to be able to go outside and a little cat door would be very helpful. She's very used to that right now because we have one right now. So she would want that, she would need that. So I uh, put a cat door off of the sunroom here. I thought that would be perfect. And then also she could just be hanging out there and chilling while um, my boyfriend is doing some like painting or sketching or drawing or whatever it is that he wants to do in his hobby space. And then I went back to the kitchen to, of course, clutter it up a little bit more. I love this little um, coffee corner area that I did at the end of the cabinets, if that makes sense, like at the, uh, in the in the corner there, if you will. It's not necessarily a corner. It's more like the end piece of the cabinet. Um, I really like that tall cabinet where I could fit a coffee maker under it. And then here I have this awkward space next to the, oh, right. I changed out the bifold doors to actual closed doors because I needed some extra space here next to the kitchen because that space just felt a little bit too awkward and empty. So I decided to put a tiny little two-seater dining table here as an extra spot to drink your coffee. It's right by the coffee nook there. So I thought that would make sense to like have a little spot there to sit with your laptop and drink your coffee. And in a big house like this, I feel like it'd be nice to have different little areas where you can just sit down. Like if you work from home, for example, how nice would it be to just kind of get your laptop and change up your environment? Like sit down in the study, like or in the office upstairs for a couple hours, but then have your coffee and move your laptop downstairs and then uh, move over to the island counters of, or like the, uh, or, or the dining table for that matter, like stuff like that. I felt like it'd be nice to have different areas so you can kind of pick and choose where you want to hang out. That's what I try to achieve through like the way I, I furnish this house essentially. Um, and yeah, here you can see that I was cluttering up the kitchen. I had so much fun with this because of course, CC creators give us all the clutter that we could possibly want. Um, we have all these beautiful cups and glasses and beautiful little plants and a basket filled with bread. I thought that was so cute and all these like, cups and we have this toaster. This toaster isn't functional, this toaster is decorative, but I thought it was so cute. So I had to place it um, and all these pot, pots and vases. And it's just, it's so, so pretty. So I just, I love how this kitchen came out. I love this color again. I, I've said it before, but I just really like the color of those countertops, the tiles. 
I like tiles for a countertop in general. I think that's so cool. And I don't know if it's true, but it feels very retro to me. I don't know if it's actually retro, but it's kind of, it's giving me retro. So I felt like it'd be nice for this house. And of course, I also went crazy with the hanging plants in this one um, because the description said that there needed to be a bunch of plants small and big, and I decided to also go for hanging plants, um, a lot of them, uh, cause I just, I love them. I think they're so pretty. And then here in this little nook here by these beautiful tall windows, we have the official dining area, I guess you could call it. Um, and I went for like a couch or a bench on one side of the dining table and then three chairs on the other side. This lamp is a little out there. This lamp is not actually CC. This lamp is from the, I, I believe it's from the decor to the max kit. And I thought it was so cool because that's a very retro shape. Now the lamp itself, it wasn't exactly what I was looking for, but as soon as I placed it, I was like, okay, this is, this is so weird and out there that it's a cool accent piece um, and it was like nice and yellow and I thought it was so cool so I decided to use it anyway um, we have a uh, skylight in this area so I wasn't able to place a hanging lamp above the dining table so that's why I decided to go for something crazy big like this one like this standing light that kind of hangs over the dining table still um, but it's not a hanging light so I thought that was perfect for this I do realize that the uh, couch on one end of the dining table isn't actually functional your sims can't sit there and use it it's not a booth, like it's not a functional booth situation as like the dine out booths for, for example. But I still felt like it'd be so cute because I know, <laughs> I know my boyfriend, I like his style and I know that he likes that sort of a situation by the dining table, like a, a bench on one side and then chairs on the other. So that's what I did, even though in The Sims it's not necessarily functional, but you know, I wasn't really building this for gameplay with gameplay in mind. Of course, I wanted everything to be functional. So if you did want to actually use this, if you do have all this CC, then you can go ahead and download this and, and it will be completely functional. But at the same time, that's not really, that wasn't necessarily the goal for this specific build. So that's why I chose to do it anyway. And then here, as you can see, we have the landing. Now, I'm not sure if you remember, but it said that um, there needed to be a loft, like a landing loft situation. So that's what I did. The landing itself is not very big, but it is a loft. You kind of look down into not the living room, but in the uh, kitchen and dining area. So that's what it looks down to. And I feel like that's very cozy. Um, and then on the landing, I just put some cat stuff and some decorative, like a nice little, a nice little bench and some, um, some mirrors and stuff like that. And then over here we have the bathroom. I was definitely struggling a little bit with the bathroom because I'm so not used to all this beautiful, modern bathroom stuff in the Sims. And I'm like, oh, I'm not sure what my dream bathroom for that matter, my boyfriend's dream bathroom would look like. I'm not exactly sure what colors I would go for. Like for the kitchen and living room, I could kind of figure that out along the way. But for the bathroom, I just wasn't sure. So I decided to go for this tile on the wall that kind of matches the color of the kitchen, which is not very realistic, but I just think it's a very pretty color. And then this terrazzo um, flooring that I thought was so, so pretty. And we just have a nice walk-in shower that I think is really nice with these glass dividers. Uh, a double sink was a must. That was a requirement. So I decided to, uh, of course, do that as well in here. And then a tub, there needed to be a tub. I personally wouldn't really want a tub. It wouldn't really matter to me. I never really use tubs anyway. I just, uh, I don't like taking baths. It's, it takes a long time. It's a little boring and I just, I don't know. It's not very relaxing to me. I know that that's not the case for everyone. I know some people love it. Apparently my boyfriend would like to take baths. We don't have a bathtub in this house. We barely have a bathroom in this house. It's literally smaller than this little tiny laundry space that I created on the landing. It's smaller than that. I think our real life bathroom is like two Sims tiles with a shower on one end and a sink in the other and a door in the middle. That wouldn't even fit in the Sims, but like that's how, how big it is in real life. So, you know, like a nice bathroom, I guess with a tub and a double sink would be so nice. So I made that happen for this house, of course. And then here we have the bedroom and the bedroom needed to have access to a balcony, which in the beginning definitely 
messed with my um with the shape of the house like it was so difficult to make everything happen like with the balcony and the access off of the bedroom to the balcony and not off of the landing or the study but like you know like it, it was very uh it was giving me some struggles but i did make it happen in the end and i think it actually turned out really really nice the balcony isn't the biggest but i definitely had space for like a nice bench and also some vertical planters there i thought that would be really nice so I did that and then for the rest, the bedroom isn't that spectacular, but the colors are really nice. Of course, this CC is just gorgeous. I used this green wallpaper in here. Um, it is a wallpaper with like, it doesn't have like a pattern to it, but it does have a really nice texture to it that I felt like definitely added some like coziness and warmth to the space. And then this orange brown color, like the rusty brown, I guess, on the bedding is so nice. I love that color. That to me just screams retro. And then I combined it with this rug. Sixum, again, one of the creators that I used has a retro stuff uh, CC like custom content little pack that I of course downloaded and used in this one as well. It has such cute stuff. Um, and I believe that the rug that I used in both the living room downstairs, the bedroom here upstairs, and then in the, um, in the office upstairs as well in three different swatches, I believe those are from that retro pack. I hope I'm not lying, but I think those are from the retro pack and they're so, so fun. And then here off of the bedroom, we have those sliding doors into the um, walk-in closet space, which I think is really nice. Of course, CC creators have those beautiful um, built-in wardrobe kinds of things that you can just kind of clutter up and go crazy with. I decided to, you know, um, save some time and actually close them off by putting doors in front of them. So I didn't actually have to go through and clutter up all those shelves. You can because, I mean, of course, these creators also give us all sorts of like little folded piles of clothes and hanging clothes. And there is so much to choose from like shoes and, and boxes and storage. And it's so nice. But uh, this house was taking me a while at this point. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to close off the walk-in closet with some doors and pretend that it's filled up with stuff. And then here we have the office upstairs, which would be our shared office where I would have my desk for uh, streaming and video creating. And then my boyfriend would also have a desk for working and gaming and stuff like that. And uh, I was creating my own little backdrop here with some shelves and books. And of course a cat tree, cause I have that right now as well. So we need a, we need a spot for the cat to hang out. Um, and then a beautiful hanging plant. And uh, it would just be so nice to have a little backdrop like this and have a little bit more space. That is, definitely my dream. And then since this office space is pretty spacious, it's really big, I decided to turn it into a, a guest bedroom slash office space. Now, I didn't actually put a bed in here, but I did put a little love seat like couch situation. And I was just kind of pretending that that could be one of those pull out beds, you know, like a, a love seat slash like secret pull out bed, like mattress situation. I'm not exactly sure what the right term for that is um, in English, but that's kind of what I was imagining. So if we had guests over that wanted to stay the night or something, then we would have like a nice guest bedroom here in the office. I thought that would make sense. And if we don't have guests over, then it's a nice hangout spot like in the office. If you want to take a break from your desk, you can just hang out with your iPad or with your laptop here on the couch. I thought that would be so fun. And then I also put some additional storage of course, here in the office, um, you know, if you have guests over, it's nice to have some uh, some storage there and we could have, you know, our like leftover like equipment for filming or whatever, like stuff like that. You can kind of just like put that in there. And then after the office, we are moving on to the backyard. Now, one thing I didn't say in the description of the dream home, but I knew my boyfriend would like is an outdoor kitchen sort of space. Like, uh, like I said, he really enjoys cooking. So I feel like a grill would go over really well. So I decided to give him a small outdoor kitchen with a grill um, attached to some additional counter space. I added a sink later on as well. So I thought that would be cool. And then here we just have a really nice spot to hang out. It would be so lovely to have a backyard. Looking at this, I'm like, uh, this is literally my dream home. Like I would move into this in a heartbeat. It's so nice. It'd be so nice to have a spot to hang out outside, especially now with the weather getting better and like spring arriving. Ugh, it makes me want to move so badly because we don't have like an outdoor space to hang out. And in the winter time, it doesn't really bother me as much. I don't really think about it as much, but as soon as the spring kind of starts and the, the weather starts to warm up just 
ever so slightly, I'm like, oh, right, this is why I want to move. I want outdoor space. I want to be able to just like sit outside for a little bit if I wanted to, you know? Um, so that would be so, so nice. So yeah, of course I had to make sure we have a nice backyard with a lounge area and also some loungers in the grass. And then I almost forgot, but yeah, we have this balcony off of the bedroom where I just placed a couple of vertical planters and a little bench for hanging out. And then a picnic table out front here by the large windows that look into the living room. But then that is essentially it for this build. So let's jump into the game and I'll show you the house in real time. So here we have the house in the game. Off camera, I added a sneaky little shed here off to the side. We do have bikes that we need to park. So in this shed here, we have some bicycles parked, some extra storage. I put a Christmas tree to kind of reflect that there's storage. And I personally would probably use this shed for working out as well. My boyfriend, he goes to the gym. I don't do that. I work out at home. So I feel like a nice shed like this with a little bit of workout equipment, just to yoga mat and some weights you know would be lovely so that's what I sneakily did off camera over there but yeah here we have the front of the house this is the little driveway and then the front door of course I put a mailbox here on the wall and then there is this little hangout spot out front which I thought would be so nice because you do have this gorgeous park and like lake on this side of the house so it's actually a really pretty view and then of course in the back here we have the backyard with a, a bunch of planters to do some gardening. There is an outdoor kitchen here with a grill and a bin, of course, a nice dining table and a lounge area here. This backyard isn't too detailed or crazy, but this is definitely something that we would have, I guess, in real life. Then let's go inside. So here we have the front door. And as you can see, we have this mostly open floor plan, but still it really feels like everything is in its own little area in its own little spot. So there's a hallway here with a bunch of storage, which would be so nice to have that for all your jackets and shoes and stuff like that. A beautiful big mirror and just some ottomans to sit down and put on your shoes. Through these doors here is this additional little space here with some drawers and some clutter. And then over here is the half bathroom. You could easily turn this into a full bathroom if you wanted to, but I decided to go for a more space spacious half bath with some extra counter space for a nice sink and a beautiful mirror. I thought that would be really, really nice. And then over here is the living room space. I do think that this is my favorite spot of the house. I love all the colors. This blue rug is amazing. I would put this in my house in a heartbeat. We have a nice frame TV, of course. I really like this, um, this red splash of color that it adds. Of course, a bunch of plants and I just really try to be very very playful in this space. This lamp is a really fun, definitely retro accent, and I really like that green color that it brings in. Of course, we had to have a spot for the cat, so we have a nice cat tree here by these big windows so she can look outside and just kind of hang out there, and some different colored pillows in the couch to make it more playful, and I don't know, I just feel like this looks very lived in and cute. You can also sit down on this side. I'm not sure why you would want that, but I feel like it just fills up the space nicely. Also, our cat would probably hang out here all the time so she can keep an eye on everything that's going on in all the corners of the house. You know what I mean? I utilized the space underneath the stairs here for some extra storage and just some decorations, of course. And this is, of course, a sliding door that leads you into the backyard. Then when we walk past the staircase, you kind of enter into the kitchen, I guess. So over here, there's a tiny dining table with some stools here. I love these stools. Those feel very retro to me as well. And you can just hang out here. I love these paintings. They're so gorgeous. And then over here is the kitchen with the island. It's a really nice spacious kitchen, but I do still feel like it's not too humongous at the same time. Like it's definitely nice and luxurious, but it's not crazy. You know what I mean? Of course, I had to put down some bowls for the cat. How cute are these? And then there is a nice coffee bar over here. There is a dishwasher, which we do not currently have. So that would be such an upgrade. Of course, we have the stove over here. There is a fridge and an oven and a sink and just all this, this nice cozy and colorful clutter. And then around the corner here, we have 
have the dining table. I love this setup too. I love how it kind of brings in all the colors used elsewhere in the space. We have that green that you can kind of see in this area over here and with these stools. There's this nice blue that ties in the wallpaper and the yellow, the orange wood in the chairs. I just feel like it really pulls it all together. And then over here is some extra storage that I just made white to kind of blend into the wall and a second record player. There's also one in the living room, but I really wanted to put one here as well. And then through these doors is the sunroom. And this is where you can do your painting. So there's an easel here and just all this, um, all these art supplies. And I just try to make it cozy with some plants and clutter. And then there is this sliding door that leads you into the yard. And then I placed a cat bed on top of this chair. I thought that would be a really cute spot for the cat to hang out while you do your art, you know? That's definitely the dream. Then going upstairs, as you can see, this is a loft and the landing space looks down into the kitchen and dining, sort of. I placed the litter box on the landing because I couldn't really find a better spot for it. So, you know, it's, it's a pretty color. So at least we have that. Of course, there is a cat tree and this nice love seat. And then on this side is the bedroom. I try to not clutter this up too much and just keep it really simple but cozy and fun so these records on the wall definitely add some fun color i love the green combined with the orangey browns and pops of blue that we have going on there's a really cool hanging chair in the corner i thought that was very retro and fun some storage here and then of course the sliding doors into the walk-in closet which definitely speaks for itself but how nice would it be to have all that space and there's even a beautiful window into the garden I thought that would be nice to have some daylight in here. And then sliding doors leading you onto this balcony, which is very simple. It just has a bench and some, um, some vertical planters. Going back to the landing, over here we have the one and only full bathroom of the house. Loving the colors in here. It's so like serene and calming. We have a nice double sink. I love this sink. I think it's really, really fun. And look at these little slippers on the floor. It's such a cute detail. I wish we had those in the game. There is a toilet over here and then a nice walk-in shower and of course a tub as well. Over here is a tiny laundry space. I kind of added that later on because I thought it'd be nice to have. So we have these laundry machines of course and then just some storage. And then over here we have the office space. I love how fun and colorful this space is. Over here is just a lounge area. This couch is definitely very retro and I thought it was such a fun and playful addition for this, uh, for this office space. And then over here are the double desks. We were kind of pretending that these would be like up and down, like standing desks, if you will. That's definitely the dream. So this would be my side with the streaming computer and the lights and the cute backdrop. And then this would be my boyfriend's side with his, um, with his gaming computer as well. And I just love the colors and the vibes in this space. But yeah, that is uh, basically it for this build. So this retro dream home is on the gallery, though it definitely does use custom content. So it's flagged as using custom content. It also uses a bunch of packs. I definitely did not hold back for this one because obviously it needed to be perfect. It needed to be the dream home. So I did what I had to do. I built it on a 40 by 30 in the world of San Sequoia, and it comes in at just over 210 10 thousand simoleons. So yikes, not cheap, but again, it's a dream home. I had to do what I had to do. But if you want to place it in your game, then you can definitely grab it off of the gallery. But that's going to do it for today's video. So I really hope that you enjoyed this one. You can obviously go ahead and download it off the gallery. Like I just showed you, my username on the gallery is Simmery Sims. You can also follow me on Instagram and TikTok if you like. My username on there is Simmery Sims as well. If you're not subscribed to my channel already, feel free to do so. And if you would like to get notified, of every single time I upload a video, just click that little bell icon and you should be fine. I also live stream over on Twitch a few times a week. So if you're interested in that, go ahead and give me a follow over on twitch.tv forward slash Simmery Sims. So I just want to say thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye.